This is a tutorial on how to use the ModX Content Management System um, to manage a site that I have developed for a client. Now, this is Affordable Gym Hire. I'm testing it offline at the moment, which is why the URL is like that. Um, essentially, this is now a content managed site. The design was originally done by Design and the content management system integration done by Scoresoft.com using the ModX Revolution content management system. So, this is the outcome of what's been integrated at the moment. And actually, same design as the previous site, um, all the pages are currently within the system. The question is, okay, if you're the customer, how am I going to go about editing this? I've currently got JavaScript disabled, so you need to make sure for ModX that you've got JavaScript enabled. Um, so let me refresh that page. So to get into the admin control panel, you open this. So I'm going to open it in a new tab. And this is this is the, the uh, view that you see when you log in. So the structure of the page and this navigation is built automatically from the links that are within here. So one thing you'll notice is everything is in a tree structure, um, like this. And these are the pages resources that are within your site at the moment. If you notice these items are dashed through, these are because these are deleted items that haven't been committed. And if you click the delete button, it'll let you permanently delete it because we don't need them at the moment. So as you can see, if we have a sitemap for the page, which is also automatically generated, you'll see the same tree structure as you see on this page here. So the, the first thing you're going to want to know is, okay, I've got pages on here and I want to change the content. How do I go about doing that? Well, quite simply, even though this looks like a folder, that's the home page. You can click on the home page and you're following fields to a basic page. Um, so you've got the template it uses and you've got a list of them to select from. These are different templates for different sorts of pages. On the current site, ones with a fader is probably the one you're going to want. So for the majority of cases, you're going to want with fader. Title is the home page title. This is what appears partially in here. The long title is also what appears up, up in this browser bar and also is important for search engines. Um, the description is the meta description, also important for search engines. The resource alias is is uh, the URL. So at the moment we've got index.php forward slash id equals 31. Once, we've, once uh, I've configured URL rewriting for you, this will mean that this forward slash index whatever will be replaced by this resource alias. So you can type in whatever you want. You might want to type this in as affordable and then that would mean that this get up, gets updated but at the moment um, HD access rewriting isn't enabled so you won't see that feature but it will be for the final build summary is a basic summary of the page we, again this isn't actually used within the site so ignore this for now parent resources defines the tree structure if it's not specified it automatically is automatically generated and menu title is what is seen in these menu items so if I was to change this to something else and save it you'll see that when I refresh this page it's also changed there. The main content of the page fits in here so you see all of that stuff is what is also on this home page here. The thing to notice is stuff here is styled the same way as on here so it's it's always worth once you write something in to test the main page but quite simply there's a load of edit tools to make bold you can link to things by clicking this, you can center, you can style but let's say you wanted access to the HTML, you can toggle this on and off. And you get a HTML view should you want to copy and paste any HTML in code in for any reason. So the next thing is template variables. Now these variables that these are values in here that are specific to this template. Um, so what we've got here are meta keywords, every page meta keywords, and it's again this is a search engine thing. And the this here is relevant to the fader that is on the home page. So this fader picks up the images within folder. So if you go to the left, and if I go into reusable page bits, you see number 41 is default fader images, and within here are all the images that are on this fader page. 
And you'll notice we can move stuff around. We want the fitness packages. If we wanted the fitness packages above. Then you'll notice when we refresh this, fitness packages are now first. Likewise, if you click on it, these the, the ones with the um, cog on them are static resources. Now, what this basically means is there's no they're not considered a page; they're considered a resource. So, for the sake of this, all you need to worry about is figuring out the title, maybe the alias, and making sure you specify the static resource. Now, this static resource is these images. So say you wanted to add a new image to the footer, all you would need to do is select one of the current ones. So that's the vibro plug. You you click on vibro create and you can duplicate resource. So we're going to give it a new name, new image. So now this new image is in there. If you notice, if we click on it, it's italic on on the text on the side here. That means it's not published yet. So if we actually go OK, click on this, we want to use an image. The images are currently stored within here. Um, let's say we want to use this number 8 image with the bars and stuff on here. If we pub and save, we can then move this new image up to there. So now if you refresh the home page, you'll see this home image has now, has now been replaced. Now, let's say Let's delete this resource because we don't want that anymore. And let's commit the deletion. Um, you can copy this folder, and this will actually copy everything within it. It will be given a new number, and then you can change the images as you want. And then on any page, if you want to have a different rotator for every page, all you do is you look at the the, the the folder for that, which so it might be 33, for example, and you go into the um, you go into the page that you want so let's say we're changing it for equipment there you go to template variable you just change it from 41 to whatever else you might want it to be so you might you might want to pick it up from the side of higher images you, you click some bed higher there the next thing to look at is changing of the uh, the pages in the fitness packages and the equipment for hire page. Now these are essentially product pages that are on the website and these again are automatically generated so if we go into say equipment for hire you see we've got products in here in the form of a page like I just showed you before. Again remember the stylings aren't going to be consistent across both so that's why this looks slightly different to, to this one. I've implemented this little breadcrumb here so you can quite easily go back and forth between pages. Um, if you see this one happens to have a price even though this one doesn't and this one has the, the footer. And I'll show you how to change that. So essentially page information but let's go through to through to um, template variables and if you see this has got the name green and the price 2 which is what is appearing at the bottom here. So all you need to know is that in order to add new prices you type the name, the price, comma, you type price without any symbols, so let's say £50. And then that's it, price added if you click save. Let's say you want multiple prices, you spit them by this up symbol. And you can literally have as many as you want in there. And when you save, you'll notice that when we reload, you've got all those new prices in here. And this will dynamically picked up, so the name to something else. Click save. notice this has updated the name and if we delete this and then click save, you'll notice it gets rid of all of it and replaces it with this dotted box um, now what you can do is you can set the text in this dotted box by scrolling down to this this footer box and typing in whatever text you want um, it's good to format it with heading 3 and then you click save and you'll notice when you reload this page you've got your text in there as well but let's get rid of that because we don't want it anymore. The next thing is this product page has an image within here. If you notice, they're also to this at the moment. And there's, the way to change that is again through this template variables bit. You'll see that there's this, the image for the product page. Now, you want to make sure that any images that you upload to use in this are 150 by 150. But essentially, all you do is you click on this to change the image. Um, I've got the images stored in here. 
and let's change it to the Affordable Gym Hire logo. So click OK on the save. You'll notice when we refresh the page, this has now changed the Affordable Gym Hire. Um, the thing is, is that it may seem that, okay, well, let's say I've got an image on my computer, how do I put it on the site? That's easy, you go to Files, Expand Files, let's say I want to add it into Print Images. What you do is you click on the Upload File button, and then you add a file from your computer. And you select the file and you upload it, and then it will be on the server. You, you can move it around via this. And then when, you, when you're in this dialog here, you can then you'd be able to select it. So images and resources work like that. This Google Checkout Merchant ID is something I'm going to set up once once the, once your Google Checkout account has been registered. I will change this so that on every single product page, it uses the same one. So so let's say you come into the system and you want to add a new product. The easiest way to do that is to duplicate a product that's already within the category that you want. So let's say we duplicate this resource. Call it a little gobbledygook. And we click in it, and again, it's quite a lot of gobbledygooks to know which one it is, and we'll publish it, and we'll save. When we refresh the page, you'll notice that product has already been added, and all you have to do now is edit the details to whatever you want it to be. You can you can delete all this text, do whatever you want. You've got a new product there. Um, so so let's delete that for the time being, because we didn't want that. So, okay, let's say that you wanted to add an entire new category to your site. Again, a very easy way to do this is equipment for hires the category. Let's right click on it. Let's duplicate the resource. Again, let's call it new category. And notice, because we tick children, it's got all the children within it. If we refresh the page, you'll notice it isn't currently in the navigation. That's because when you duplicate something, by default, all the newly duplicated pages aren't published. So if we just quickly go through and publish these pages, you can either tick that box or via here you can right click on the pages and click publish so let's publish just these two for now and that's when we refresh the page you've now got the other category now it's still called equipment for hire because we've not gone in and changed the menu title so new item new item and it will save if we refresh this new item go in here are the things we enabled. You can go in again and you can look or you can change all the content on the page nice and simple. So let's delete this new category. And we'll commit the deletion. Now any changes that you make will automatically happen in the, in the um, back end. So you can always click sitemap. And, and any pages will be added in here automatically that are published and hidden. Now, something else you can do is you can create pages that are hidden from the menu structure. So let's say I create um, a new page. Now, we're going to create a new page without copying anything. So let's say we create a new document. And let's call it My Page. And let's have some gobbledygook stuff on it. And we'll save that. Now, if we publish this, you'll notice that because it's on the top level and not within any folders when we refresh this page it's also not with it's, it also appears at the bottom we get the gobbledygook now um, let's say we had another page you could drag that so let's say we dragged contact us to here contact us is now a child of my page and if we refresh this you'll see contact us is gone and if we go to the sitemap you'll see that contact us is now Part of my page now from my page you can't get to contact us that's to just give you an idea so let's drag this back up um, but let's say we want to link to this from other pages but we don't want to it to appear on the on the main navigation um, so all we do for that is hide from menus so then if we save we refresh the page my page has now disappeared contact us is back where it was and this is now hidden from, men from menus the next thing that's quite important to show you is how do you link between the pages. So let's say we've got a link on the 